All right, hello, and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Six Planet Renewed mod, which is being made by form user RJVB09. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a lovely new planet being added into the vanilla solar system for the game that also does have a few beautiful moons. And apparently this is actually a revamp of this particular modern first planet pack and considering they did of course make the last one we looked at of low light levels I'm expecting some good things so let's jump into the tracking station and as I zoom out to our whole solar system view I should mention of course like with last time we are still in version 1.7.3 of the game as this does rely on Copernicus for it to function so do keep that in mind but once you have Copernicus and this mod installed you can see we have, oh boy, a planet way out in the distant part of our solar system in quite the inclined orbit, making it a, well, pretty challenging planet to get to, or at least one that's a bit more interesting to try and get to. And if we go and focus on Yila, we'll zoom on in to see it in all of its glory along with its three separate moons. So this is what we're getting here, folks, and let's take a look at Yila itself, which, as you can see, is a beautiful yellow gas giant, which is 4,000 kilometers in size with its radius, has a gravity of 0.48 g's and of course being a gas giant does have an atmosphere just don't go exploring it and is a pretty beautiful little planet i mean for a gas giant it's fairly standard for a gas giant but yeah, there's something about them I do always enjoy. Sadly, no ring, but hey, I can I can live with that, considering we do have a very close-by moon, which has a beautiful view of the planet, and of course, that is the first moon of Ucko, which is quite small, being a captured asteroid, effectively, and is 15 kilometers in size, with a gravity of 0.051 g's, has a no atmosphere, and is quite a difficult little planet to get you to. As you can see, it is, well, very, very tiny, and our uh, survey satellite we have above it is at 15,000 meters of an orbit. Much beyond that, and you are not going to get an orbit around this thing. It has a very small sphere of influence making it a more difficult thing to get to and overall though that makes it pretty fun to visit and all in all it's just a nice shaped asteroid with some good texturing and modeling there and a lot of nice topography now the next moon that we do have is the moon of Ela, which is quite a bit bigger at 240 kilometers in size with a gravity of a 0.26 g's and does actually have a thin atmosphere as it is a lovely little icy world that's just very good looking i do like an icy world though i must admit it does make it at least in my opinion a little bit less boring to explore on the surface just because eh, it's just all ice from orbit though they are Gorgeous, and you can see we got a few good little impact craters around, some nice crevasses, etc., along it, and is pretty cool with just endless sheets of ice all over the place. And then finally, we have the third moon in this little planet pack, which is Molly. And this one is a lot more fun to explore on the surface. Now, it's a uh, fairly small at 140 kilometers in size with a gravity of 0.12 g's. Does not have an atmosphere, but as you can see on the visual of this thing, it is just hot marked in asteroid impacts. You've got craters all over the place, making it a much more interesting terrain to go around and explore. And all in all, it's just another nice little moon. Though I think my favorite part about this particular planet pack is that not only is Yila itself in a very inclined orbit compared to everything else, even Elu over there, but the moons around it also do have other various inclinations, not quite to the degree of Yila compared to the rest of the solar system, but as you can see here, each moon does have a different inclination, which is pretty cool. It just makes it a little bit more challenging and interesting to get to, and that is always a fun thing. Now let's go look at the view from our Viewmatic Survey satellite in orbit around Uko to see our glorious new planet and this 
this one particular moon in all of its glory, as they do look magnificent if we zoom out there a little bit yeah again oko is kind of an interesting one considering how small that sphere of influence is on it but it just makes it kind of a more entertaining planet or rather moon to try and get to even me just using hyper edit to cheat my way over here it took a little bit of doing because i was trying to figure out the best orbit for a good view and also still being in its sphere of influence and even like twenty thousand meters out is way too far you're outside the sphere of influence you're just gonna fly right by the place if you're trying to get here you know normally on a rocket it's just a cool little asteroid with a gorgeous view of this beautiful yellow gas giant here with of course also a nice view of its other neighbor of Ela. i don't know if we can see molly from this world at least not from its current orbit it is a bit further out from the others so it would be a lot smaller but yeah, overall, the sixth planet renewed mod is pretty cool. I, I may have to go back and look at the original version of this to see how it has improved from the original just on my own personal time, because I would be intrigued to see how this mod maker has developed in making their planet packs. But a nice little piece of work, and if you'd like to have a look at it for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that is going to be it for this episode of today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!